All right, this is example seven with uh, using the first derivative test to find all local extrema of a function. So in this case, our function is f of x equals four minus x to the two thirds. So we're gonna find all the local extrema of this guy by using the first derivative test. So um, step zero, find the domain. So here, um, four minus x, everything's okay with that. Then we raise to the two thirds. So remember, uh, to the two thirds, that means square, okay, square it, and then take a third root, or take a third root first and square it. Uh, but in any case, you know, you can think about it either way. But uh, third roots, you can take the third root of anything. You can take odd roots of any number at all, even negative numbers. And squaring is okay with anything. So in other words, there are no domain restrictions here. So the domain is all real numbers. So that's good. Uh, nothing worth writing down there. And then uh, step one, find all the critical points. So now we take the derivative, find out where's the derivative zero and where's it undefined. So let's go ahead and do that. So, um, f prime of x. So actually what we're going to have here is a uh, power rule and chain rule. So power rule is going to give us uh, two-thirds comes down and then four minus x to the negative one-third, right? As we subtract one from the exponent and two-thirds minus one, okay, two-thirds minus one is two-thirds minus three-thirds, which is negative one-third. So that's what happened there. Uh, okay. And then chain rule says now multiply by the derivative of 4 minus x. So, you know, it's 4 minus x is a function sitting inside of another function, which is raising to the two-thirds here. So um, chain rule says derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy, which is what this is. Now multiply by the derivative of the little guy. So the little guy is 4 minus x, so its derivative is uh, 0 minus 1, or just negative 1. So that's our derivative. So now let's go ahead and rewrite that. Um, now remember that... Uh, Negative exponents, uh, you can bring them to the denominator and they become positive. So uh, negative 2 on top, negative 2 on top. And then on the bottom we have 3 times the quantity 4 minus x to the positive one third. All right. So uh, this is our derivative here. This is what f prime of x equals. Now we want to know where is this guy undefined and where is it 0? Well, let's talk about where it's 0 first. So remember, if... Uh, if you want to find out where is a fraction type thing equal to zero, that happens when the top is zero. But the top is just negative two. Uh, so basically what you're saying is give me a value of x such that negative two equals zero. Well, that's just crazy talk, right? So uh, actually, in other words, negative two is never zero. So this derivative is never equal to zero. Uh, there are no values of x that make this derivative zero. So this never happens. Um, no, never equal to zero. But, um, you know, a critical point is also a place where the derivative is undefined. And where is this undefined? Well, it's undefined if the bottom is zero. And when is the bottom zero? Well, three is never zero, but basically, you know, uh, so we're saying, okay, solve this equation. Three times four minus x to the one third equals zero. Well, uh, just divide both sides by three and forget about it. But four minus x to the one third equals zero. We can cube both sides. So raised to the third, raised to the third. Uh, one third and three cancel, so four minus x equals zero, um, which means x equals four. So, you know, you might also be able to just kind of tell that by looking at it, and that's fine too, but, you know, for those of you who want or need to see more details, uh, here they are. Um, just take the denominator, set it equal to zero. And now when x is four, the denominator is zero, which means the derivative is undefined, because you can't divide by zero. So the derivative is undefined when x is four. But remember, in order to be a critical point, you have to be in the domain of the original function, but the domain of the original function was all real numbers, right? So actually, this is okay. So this is an example where we have uh, a critical point where the derivative is undefined, but it's still in the domain of the original function. So here's our only critical point, x equals 4. Um, okay, so uh, now we go to, or let's see, that was step 1, find all the critical points of f of x. Now step 2, make a sign chart for the derivative. So this is our only critical point. So our sign chart... Um, is just going to look like this. So we label it f prime because our function here uh, is f, so the derivative is f prime of x. So we just label it f prime, uh, label the sign chart f prime, and then we put 4 on there because 4 is our only critical point. So, um, and remember, there's no domain restrictions on f, right? There's no domain restrictions on f, so we don't have to cut this off anywhere. So um, that's it for step two, make a sign chart. Step three, determine the sign of the derivative in each interval. So we just pick one number from each of these intervals, negative infinity to 4 and 4 to infinity. Pick one number from each of these guys and then just evaluate the derivative there. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's choose 3 from the first interval. So f primed of 3 
equals what? Well, in order to evaluate this, let's use this form of the derivative here. So the derivative is, it's all kind of messy with all these circles and boxes, but uh, just to recap, uh, f prime of x equals um, negative 2 over 3 times 4 minus x to the 1 third. Negative 2 over 3 times 4 minus x to the 1 third. So that's our derivative here. And this is the form we're going to use to evaluate uh, the derivative at our two points we pick. So negative 2 over 3 times 4 minus 3 to the 1 third. So um, let's see, negative 2 over 3 times 4 minus 3 to the 1 third. So you might be thinking, well, hey, 0 and 1 are in this interval. Can't we pick them? And yeah, we could. But what's nice about 3 is 4 minus 3 is 1. And 1 to the 1 third is just 1. So that's going to be easier to evaluate. So this is negative 2 over 3 times uh, 1 to the 1 third. All right. 1 to the 1 third is just 1. So uh, we have negative 2 over 3 times 1. So this is actually uh, negative 2 thirds, right? which is less than 0. But again, we don't care about the exact value. We just care, is it positive, is it negative? And uh, it's negative. So the derivative is negative in this whole interval up here. Um, OK. So that's good. Now, what happens uh, on this other side here? So let's pick uh, 5. We pick x equals 5. Uh, what are we going to have? We are going to have uh, f prime of 5 equals, uh, let's see negative 2 over 3 times 4 minus 5 to the 1 third. So we have negative 2 over 3 times the quantity 4 minus 5 to the 1 third. And again, 5 is a good one to pick because 4 minus 5 is negative 1, and negative 1 to the 1 third is easy to evaluate. So we just have negative 2 over 3 times negative 1 to the 1 third. So remember, 1 third is cube root, so the cube root of negative 1 is just negative 1 still. So this is uh, negative 2 over 3 times negative 1, all right? So this actually simplifies to positive 2 thirds, right? Positive 2 thirds, because um, negatives cancel out. And uh, that's greater than 0. So derivative is positive here. All right, so that's it for step 3. Determine the sine of f prime of x in each interval. So now step 4, apply the first derivative test to find extrema. So if we apply the first derivative test, we see, OK, here's a critical point. The derivative is negative to the left of it and positive to the right of it. Oops, sorry. Negative to the left and positive to the right. And the first derivative test tells us that that means we have a local min here. So even though the derivative is undefined here, the original function still is, right? It's um, just 4 minus 4 to the 2 thirds, which is 0. And you know, we see the first derivative test tells us we have a local min here. So um, I mean, that's pretty much it. But now just to fill in the tiny details. So this, this is where the local min is. Now we want to figure out what is the actual value. I mean, we kind of just said it real quick, but let's be a little more thorough about it. So now, um, you know, remember, we're talking about local mins and maxes of this function f of x, all right? So we, to find the actual values, we take the, uh, this here, 4. OK, x equals 4 is where the local min happens. So to figure out what the local min actually is, we take 4 and stick it into here. So um, f of 4 equals 4 minus 4 to the 2 thirds, um, which is 0 to the 2 thirds. And 0 to any uh, positive number is just 0. 0 to anything except 0 is 0. So, but anyway, um, little side details here. So anyway, this uh, when x is 4, y is 0. So what we just found out is um, we have a local min at x equals 4, and it is y equals 0. So let's write that down. Uh, local min at x equals 4, and it is y equals 0. So um, there are no local maxes here, so no, no local max. All right. And you know, if you think it's kind of weird that you know, this critical point, so this is a little bit different from the other examples we've done so far, in that uh, this critical point, um, it's a point where the derivative is undefined, but the original function still is. So we haven't had an example like this yet. Um, so let's see, you know, if we graph this real quick, let's just see what that looks like. So here's our final answer here. The rest is just kind of little details if you're interested. Um, I mean, you can kind of toss that into a graphing calculator. So if you toss this into a graphing calculator, um, then hopefully, uh, you'll get something that kind of sort of looks like this. Or you should anyway, it should give you this back. So uh, x-axis, y-axis. 
All right, so uh, x, y. So this happened at four. So we had a local min at four, but you know, it's this exponent two thirds. It kind of makes your function do something a little goofy like this. Um, so your function is going to kind of sort of look like this. Um, it, that's a really bad drawing, but you know, it, it just keeps increasing this way and it keeps, uh, if you come in from the left, it's decreasing the whole time. Um, this is a terrible drawing, but anyway, the point here, this is x equals 4. And this, remember this, we talked about this uh, a bunch of videos ago, this is called a cusp. So remember, uh, the derivative doesn't exist when you have a cusp. So here, this is an example where the derivative is not existing, but um, you know, you still have a local min here, right? So we've actually seen a graphical example of this a few videos ago when we talked about local mins, local maxes, when we introduced those. And we also saw an example of this graphically when we talked about when does the derivative exist, when does it not exist. And now here, um, we actually have one where we analyze it algebraically. So we found the derivative set it equal to zero. Uh, there were no such values of x that made it zero. And then we found out uh, the derivative is undefined when x is four. So we actually just work through this algebraically now. So we've seen this graphically a few times in a couple different contexts, but now um, we've just seen it uh, in an algebraic context where we actually worked with it. So this is y equals 4 minus x to the 2 thirds. And that's just uh, little side details if you're interested. And again, um, this is our final answer here. Local min at x equals 4 is y equals 0, and there is no local max. So that's it for example 7 with the first derivative test.